Everybody, thank you so much for attending today. I naturally knew that we would get quite a bit of interest in the topic regarding QuickBooks. So I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Brent Hoover. I run the Aiken Area SBDC here, but I'm also joined by my senior partner and senior QuickBooks instructor, Earl Gregorich. He is also, in, granted, in a different area of the state, but between the two of us, we pretty much handle a lot of the QuickBooks requests that come into our network. So as you can see, the first word here is introduction. No, we are not setting up your chart of accounts for you on today's call. We are trying to show you, though, what QuickBooks can do for you. More importantly, as I see with a lot of my clients, make sure QuickBooks works for you and not against you, because it easily can do the latter, and hopefully it does the former. So, Earl, did you want to briefly introduce yourself as well, or would you like me to continue? Sure, I'll just take a moment. It's uh, Earl Gregory. So I'm the area manager in the Greenville, South Carolina office. So Brent's counterpart up here in the upstate, and uh, he and I both are QuickBooks Online certified. So we get to take you on this journey today. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, Earl. So to give you an overview about today's agenda, let's look at it. Naturally, we want to talk about who we are and what we can do for you outside of QuickBooks, because we are not limited to just this one topic. Now, once we have done our little spiel, or you may say our marketing pitch on SBDC, we can actually get into the topic, right? About the different options that you have within QuickBooks. There are multiple platforms, and within there is multiple pricing structures. Then we're gonna talk about hopefully automating your system as much as possible. Once again, making it easier on your life so you can focus actually on running your business. And lastly, there are some very unique features. Some are going to be customized and tailored towards individual businesses, but there are overall elements that can be certainly beneficial when looking at the strategic information of your company. Lastly, we're gonna be doing a review. Now, I'm not just working solely in PowerPoint. We are going to actually operate on a test drive link. If you get QuickBooks certified, you pretty much use this for most of the quote unquote homework with said certification. We're gonna provide that link as well. So therefore, if you wanna play around in QuickBooks, because some of you have mentioned given Earl's request, that you're not a user yet. This allows you to see, all right, is this program the right fit for me? And you don't have to worry about breaking anything at all in the nature. And please, as you have a question, you know, go ahead and type it in the chat box. Earl is keeping a collection of those. He's gonna be interjecting throughout this presentation as well. So hopefully we're gonna be able to get to your individual questions. The one thing I am pointing out is if there's something truly specific to your QuickBook needs, please let Earl and I know, and we can handle that off actually this webinar we can set up a time. You'll find out our cost or no call services. Therefore, hey, why not take advantage of it? And we can actually give you the time and dedication to your specific needs in that manner. So SBDC, well, first of all, let's start with the basic acronym. So we're the Small Business Development Center. You'll find pretty much every state here in the US has an SBDC. Now, what does that organization actually do? Well, as I mentioned earlier, right, there's no cost for what we are offering. Now, people are like, well, what's the catch? The catch is we have to keep track of metrics. We're able to prove our economic impact. We do receive funding from the SBA statewide and even here in Aiken locally from Aiken County. Therefore, we're able to track aggregate metrics and thus that is the essential price, but there is no cost to you as the client. Everything that's said is bound by confidentiality. Every consultant has to sign an annual ongoing conflict of interest slash confidentiality statement provided by the SBA. So unless you give us explicit permission, what is said to us remains confidential. Now, if you see the second point, we've got access to valuable resources. Well, one of those you can see right here is assistance with QuickBooks, but that is not limited to just that. That could be doing data modeling in Excel, IVA's world for market research, profit sense for analyzing and benchmarking your business, et cetera. And of course, with the last bullet point, that's what we're doing right here today, educating you and offering you a virtual workshop. As long as you're on our email list, you'll pretty much get a some form of message throughout each month from Robert Jones, who is handling our marketing components of the webinars. And maybe you look at a topic and say, hey, this is a good fit for me. So hopefully you take advantage of our future webinars as well. Now, we do have some specialized programs. It's ironic enough because Earl and I are actually part of the first one, our cybersecurity assistance. I know that bores people sometimes, but cybersecurity is very important. And that certainly is also included within QuickBooks, all right? Your information being protected. Now, what do we end up doing? There's a new model that's gonna be debuting. It's called the CMMC. We focus on just basic cyber hygiene. It doesn't require a cyber degree. 
We're just trying to get our clients better educated about how to protect themselves. Now, for any of you that are interested, we do have specialists in other areas, such as exporting. We've got Ben Smith, we've got Beth Smith, et cetera. They can handle on actually helping your business offer products out to other countries. And if you want to do business outside of the B2C, business to consumer, you want to get into the B2G, the business to government, we do have specialists as well. I actually do help additionally in this in terms of helping the clients get registered either as 8A, hub zone businesses, woman-owned small business, et cetera. But if you want the finer points, we do have a specialist, actually quite a few here in our network. And last but not least, product commercialization, if you are interested in developing and patenting your product. So as you can see, we have plenty of value to offer, but we always wanna make sure people are well aware as to what we can offer for you. Now that said, we've, we've moved away from our spiel on the services. Let's focus on QuickBooks. I told you first things first, have QuickBooks work for you and not work against you. This is critical. Well, one of the first things you need to determine is which platform you're gonna use for the operating of QuickBooks. Now, if you notice QuickBooks Online or QBO as it's commonly referred to online is probably the better choice from what it comes regards to one thing, ubiquity. Now, desktop has more power in that case. The thing we're noticing is a trend and you will also see this with your CPA is that QuickBooks Online, more CPAs are gravitating towards it. This is one of the things you always need to figure out what is best for you. Just like there is no best legal structure, it's a determining the best fit for your individual needs. Now, in terms of the pricing structure, which we're gonna get into a graphic, you'll see that there's not just one set for online. All right, it's about what do you need, whether that includes inventory, HR support, et cetera. Now, in terms of the desktop itself, you can run through a subscription. Right now, it's gonna run somewhere between about 250 to 350 for the first year. But once again, ensure that whoever is helping you manage your records actually supports this software. Now, desktops, once again, yes, it is starting to become phased out in a sense, but it does offer more power than that. So once again, it's about what your business needs, but please make sure that you are actually determining the compatibility with your CPA. Another thing too, you can actually upgrade from the desktop into online. So don't think that you're stuck with one element. All right, now some of you may already be operating on desktop. You know, if everything's synchronized, you may be good, but if you are looking to transition through the online environment, you can do so by taking the information going from desktop to online. So that's my spiel on the different platforms. Now, in terms of what exact version of it you need, depends on what's your specifications of the business. Everybody's unique. You know, do you actually sell inventory? And yes, this will, of course, play a factor into, you know, cash versus accrual basis accounting. But at the end of the day, do you actually have a physical product? If so, you need to ensure that your version of QuickBooks actually allows for managing of inventory. Also, you will find that there are some additional add-ons. One of those is actually QuickBooks Payroll. So if you were looking for QuickBooks to handle not only the HR components of I-9ing your W-2 employees, but also tracking time, making sure we have proper withholdings, et cetera, QuickBooks can do that but not necessarily by default. So you might need to upgrade for that capability. You will notice too, I've got some other elements. Do you actually have estimates, progress invoicing? I mean, you may be working on a project and you're not just getting one lump sum. It may be broken up into four or five parts depending on the work that you've done, similar in the nature of accrual basis accounting. So if you are looking for that, you wanna ensure that your version has that. And as I mentioned too, with the employees, do you need to track time? If so, your platform needs to ensure that it has that capability. Earl, I see you're off mute. Did you want to interject here? Yeah, I just wanted to add that <clears throat> when you're making this assessment, don't just think about how your business looks today. Think about how it's going to look into the future. You know, right now, you might be able to handle what you're doing with, with a very basic version of QuickBooks, but that at some future time, maybe you're going to have to add point of sale. Maybe you will have to add some other time tracking element to your business. Uh, all of those things should be considered. You may not necessarily have to buy into them right now, but you want to be able to add those seamlessly in the future. Um, QuickBooks is notorious for being quote unquote compatible with a lot of things, but that's not always the easiest journey to make that happen. So uh, think ahead. I like it. You always want to look at the scalability angle for your business. Now, one of those things I see with just my individual clients People are gravitating more towards the payroll option. 
because they're looking at what CPAs are charging to actually handle most of their payroll needs. And around here, we're seeing somewhere on the 250 range. And of course, there's the base rate plus the per employee. Now, if you size that up, you do get an initial discount on QuickBooks payroll. And that goes not just for the payroll, but generally for most platforms. You'll find there's quite a few discounts out there. You should always see if SBDC's got one, LivePlan, I think, had one in the past, et cetera. But for that initial time, given maybe you have one or two W-2 employees, you might find that cost is actually more beneficial to have it automated and some basic support through QuickBooks than rather necessarily having a dedicated CPA assisting. Now, it all, once again, depends on your business, but it's something that you should consider and run the numbers and look at how much do you want it automated and how comfortable you are with that situation. I know Earl and I were discussing that yesterday. And a lot of times, if somebody has more than two W-2 employees, we try to make sure that a CBA is working hand in hand throughout this process, just to ensure that there are no mess ups along the way. Yeah, I would say, just just don't, don't think that if you have QuickBooks and you have payroll in QuickBooks, that that makes you a payroll and HR expert. No, it does not. It is far from that. What, what QuickBooks will allow you to do is to process the payment of your employees. It does not get into the regulatory aspects of what is required to manage those employees, yep. make sure you have the tax and the withholding set up properly. It certainly is a tool to help you organize that, but you still need that HR element behind this. So that's one of the reasons why we say um, if you've gone, if you're going to have multiple employees and run payroll, you're going to need that HR element anyway. So you might consider farming that part of this out. Do the math, like Brent said, see what uh, makes most sense financially. Very point. So for the next slide, and actually you knew we were going to segue into this. So what is the right plan for you? Now we've started our smart art over here with the simple essentials plus advanced, but we wanted you to actually see the details and more importantly, the current pricing structure associated with that. You'll notice plus has the most popular uh, adage on there. There's a reason. Mainly that starts going around towards the inventory and actually determining the profitability of each project. I asked you on a prior slide, are you actually going to be handling something that would have an SKU, a stock keeping unit component? If so, you want to ensure that you have plus. Now we don't see advance that often. And all honesty, out of my client size, I don't have one of them that actually operates off of advance. Now, if you'll notice what the difference ends up becoming is you can have more than five users. At the bare minimum, people start with generally essentials because it's got the three, which generally means on this case that you have access, your CPA may have access, and perhaps you want us as your consultant to have you know, at least some print access in order to be able to pull basic reports. But that's no joke when it's looking at the most popular plus starts out there. Now, if you'll see the bolded print, right? You know, 1250 all the way up to 90 a month. Those are actually a limited time element, okay? You know, if you're going in, say, after, you know, year one, I think generally it's about after the first three months, it actually upgrades into its full price. So please be aware of that. That's not just a ongoing element. It's giving you a limited time frame for that discount. Now, some other things that you probably should be aware of is looking at the analytical components. And that is one of the reasons that Advance actually offers more capability there. Essentially, it's tied into a program called Fathom, which is interesting enough because you can access that through the apps as well. If you're looking to actually benchmark your business, a lot of times people probably would actually want to go into the advanced element. There's quite a few programs that can do it. I mean, there's ProfitSense, which we use all the time. We've got Fathom, and I think one of them is uh, Imperious, if I'm not mistaken. So there is a way to actually still coordinate in there. But I will tell you this. If you want to get into data modeling, QuickBooks on its own probably isn't going to just going to do that you need to tie in with Excel to really understand what your business could do because Earl mentioned scalability. We're talking about financial scalability right here. So as to make a long story short, right? Yes, plus maybe the most popular, but it's really looking at what you should go for. There is another option that goes for self-employed that's actually not on the slide. It is the most basic thing. I mean, simple start in essence is really, you know, a version of Excel. I mean, you can pretty much do everything within that, within an Excel platform. So, you know, if you are feeling comfortable with QuickBooks, great. If you realized, hey, I'm in Essentials, I need to go to Plus, that's no problem. You can upgrade at any time for that element. And just once again, I'm just stressing, make sure it's the right fit for you. Earl. Yeah, I would say 
the upgrade path is much, much easier than the downgrade path. So if you buy in high and you try to go low, then you're going to find that your data may not carry backwards as well as it will carry forwards. And the other thing on that simple start program, folks, if you're, if you're thinking that that's a good match for you, and that very well may be a good match for some businesses, uh, usually gig workers fall into this category where they, they're really just kind of keeping track of, of money coming and going, and that's it. Um, but if you're, if you're thinking that's a match, there are, there are free tools out there that will handle that, free apps that will handle just that invoicing aspect. Uh, you can avoid a $12 a month charge by going that route instead of uh, going this route. But if you think you will migrate into a bigger, better version of QuickBooks in the future, and you want to start somewhere and Simple Start is a good match, then fine, Just go ahead and do that because it'll be much easier to migrate your data. But um, yeah, I, I would say if, if, if you're thinking Simple Start, I would look at the free platforms that are available out there for that first. Certainly. I mean, I commonly am asked, you know, should I stay in Excel or go up to QuickBooks? And I'm always asking the basic questions. Are you doing daily transactions? Do you need a lot of invoicing? And of course, are you planning to have that scalability of W2 employees? If so, yeah, go ahead and give QuickBooks a try on this. I mean, theoretically, QuickBooks could run your personal finances. Okay. It's once again, made to work for you. Let it do so. I also yeah. wanted to add that I, yes. I, post, I posted the, um, the QuickBooks promotional link for right. the SBDC in the chat. So you will have that, you will copy that out for you for yourself to look at later. That'll outline some of the discounts that are available as an SBDC client. Thank you so much. So I mentioned, we want QuickBooks to work for us and not against us. One of the main concerns I always see is that people have not automated the process. Now understanding, it's one of these where you either are all in or nothing. If you halfway automate your processes, you're probably going to run into some pitfalls down the road. So once again, it's an all buy-in. But if you are going to be that completely all-in buy-in, you're going to find this to be much more beneficial for your company. And the first thing understanding is QuickBooks operates under the chart of accounts. Some of you may say, well, I really wasn't a fan of my accounting classes. Well, unfortunately, QuickBooks does operate in that manner. It's just behind the scenes. It's trying to show essentially the end user the information that's necessary, but it's still operating on that capacity. So what falls in a chart of accounts? Well, you got your assets, you got your liabilities, you got your equity. I mean, that could be current assets, you got your cash. We're going to talk about your banking accounts, et cetera. All of these are in a separate account. Okay. The trick is determining which ones are more appropriate for you. Now, if some of you may have started from like the desktop days or the earlier variations where they essentially had the easy step interview, QuickBooks is still determining when you're setting it up, all right, which industry are you located in? And a lot of times you're gonna see some sample chart of accounts. Given what you're actually using for your business, it may be superfluous, okay? So this is why you probably need to determine, all right, which ones are more appropriate for you. Now, normally I don't set up the chart of accounts, but I do try to make my clients aware of which ones are going to be crucial for the operation of the business. Now, later on, if you realize, hey, I need a merge account, yeah, it can be done. But you'd rather get this done up front and done right. And even Intuit, that is essentially who owns QuickBooks, will do actually a one session for 50 bucks. Actually, it's help you go through the chart of accounts. I know Earl does this routinely of actually seeing, okay, is that account probably the best fit for you? But granted, we're not CPAs. You know, sometimes you may want to get final clarification from them, but it's understanding that this is how QuickBooks operates. So ensure that you have the appropriate accounts necessary. All right. Now, once you have the correct chart of accounts, what else needs to be automated? Particularly the connections. So what does this entail? Probably two things, banking and credit cards. So many times people are probably not having those automated. All right, if you decide to connect into your bank account, then yes, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time to have the proper setup, but a lot of times you can hit refresh and for most banks, it's gonna give you real-time information. That's pulling that in. I had a client that did not automate the banking process. And when they went for a financing element, QuickBooks was only showing you know, several thousand dollars in profit, which it was actually much larger. We were trying to figure out what was causing the issue. It was a lack of an automation. Now you can, of course, manually input this information into QuickBooks. And once again, why have it work against you when you could have it work for you? We're gonna see some elements with the banking. You can set the rules 
Okay, it'll even give you auto suggestions because it is looking at it from essentially a smart solution. If they start seeing one type of transaction coming in from a company, you know, it's going to look and say, all right, you used to stick it under this category. Therefore, it probably should be the same way. You can actually have that finalized as a rule, but once again, make it work for you. Now, in terms of the information that you're pulling back, so a lot of the banks are transitioning into what's known as the open auth, it's essentially like open authorization. Okay, used to be things were a little more difficult to pull back from past 90 days. You may actually have to go in your bank and get this CSV file and get everything uploaded into QuickBooks to get the prior or really historical data. A lot of times now, it's a lot easier assuming the bank's operating off that. But please understand, there's always going to be some legwork involved. But rather do it now than have to worry about it later. Because that way your P&L, your profit and loss, is going to be automated appropriately. That's not just for banking. You can also look at that from the credit card standpoint. I have quite a few clients that use their credit cards very often. You know, it's still a business account. You need to have everything properly linked in there. Why? Because you know in real time what is going on with your company expenses. Now, yes, banking and credit cards are one form of connections. In essence, that ties in very well to the other point here, the apps. All right, so you may not have everything just under QuickBooks. And there are some options you can do. I mean, now you can do QuickBooks payments directly through there. It's very advantageous in that sense. But perhaps you're operating under a different point of sale system. Clover, Square, Amazon Business, I mean, PayPal, the list goes on. You have the capability to synchronize those apps into QuickBooks. But as Earl was making a point earlier, you may look at some of those apps and they will have user ratings. Some of those user ratings are not always the highest. I know I'm having to deal with even a case where things are being overstated on sales twice. Okay, These are third-party applications. Sometimes they're working the kinks out of them. But in theory, right, most of the times they are going to work well. So that could be linking in your point of sale system. Now, what you automate within there is a different story because Earl and I were discussing this with a prior client. You know, you can have, say, like Square dump in your one day transaction as an aggregate sense. But if you're really trying to segment your customers appropriately, you may want it to do more than that. So once again, you got to determine what are you really needing out of this situation and how to improve it moving forward. So just to show these are not the only senses of automation. You, same thing can be applied to invoicing, customer discounts, et cetera. But at the bare minimum, I see this as a commonality behind most of my businesses, is that you need the chart of accounts right, you need the connections established, and hopefully get those apps working for you. If so, it's going to alleviate some of the issues that fall down the road. Earl. Yeah, I was going to make the point that on the chart of accounts, that that is really the core of QuickBooks, whether you're desktop or online, if you don't have chart accounts set up properly, it's really going to make it difficult to extract meaningful data to do analysis on the business. The good thing is when you set up QuickBooks, it leads you through a process that sets up a generic chart of accounts. Worst case scenario, you end up with a chart of accounts that's got, I don't know, 50 items in it, and you'd only need 10 of them. Um, or you get all 50 that you need, and maybe there's one or two that's missing. The good news is after you've used it for about six months, you're going to be able to easily identify those charts of accounts that you need to keep, maybe the, the few that are missing, and the system will guide you through how to set up the ones that are missing. So um, again, if, if you're not too squeamish about it, you can go in there and you can use this right out of the box for the first six months, and your chart of accounts will kind of round itself out over that short period of time. So um, don't be afraid to get in there and, and take some of the defaults and work your way through that. And then as far as the automation and the connection of the apps, if you're running the desktop version, and you've had desktop, desktop version up to this point, uh, even QuickBooks will tell you that it just was not all that great at playing well with others in the sandbox. It just didn't like to work with other software packages. QuickBooks Online is much more... Um, uh, yielding in that area. It's still not what I would consider um, uh, intuitive, but it, it can uh, connect with a lot more apps and a lot more programs out there, more so than desktop used to. So if you're sitting there thinking, gosh, you know, I really don't want to go through all that connection stuff again. I finally got it working on desktop. And, and now, now I think you'll find this path much, much easier on the QuickBooks online side 
than what you've experienced in the past. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you when I did it, I didn't want to hook anything to my QuickBooks. I, I didn't want the world having any connections whatsoever to my business numbers, but it is extremely difficult to operate QuickBooks online if you are not connected. So um, make sure you consider that when you're making this leap, uh, you, you most likely are gonna to have to connect this to the outside world. Absolutely. And one last point on the apps, don't just assume an app is free in there. Some apps actually do have a pricing structure in there. Whether you were freemium. talking about- They call that freemium. You get yeah. this much for free and the rest it costs <laughs> you, right? That's right, Earl. So it could be something like Fathom, Clover, et cetera, but do look at that and pay attention to which one would be the best for you. Now, as I mentioned, right? So QuickBooks, the end user interface is more about giving you the information that you need. But I wanna stress this enough, and that's one of the reasons we're talking about that automation, is it's still operating under the accrual basis accounting. Now we're gonna talk, you can switch between that to cash. The account equation, some of you remember this from your business classes, it's your assets equals your equity plus your liability. That is not changing at any sense. Now, the reason you're trying to automate as much as possible and also to reconcile, as you may have heard the term reconciliation, actually paying attention to what's showing up in QuickBooks actually match what's going on with your bank statements. Normally, you see a lot of people encourage that on a monthly basis. For those of my clients that don't operate under QuickBooks, we do that typically on that monthly reoccurring cycle. If you're operating under QuickBooks, I would highly suggest you do that far more often. I mean, maybe you do that every week. Some people are really paranoid about it and do it every day. They take, you know, a couple of minutes each day and actually determine that are things adding up as they should. Because if they don't, it starts off just like in the ocean. You don't see the tsunami and when you're out there, but as it gets closer to shore, it builds and builds. And then it's suddenly you end up with an unfortunate scenario. You don't want that to happen there because then you have to use what's known as the journal entries. The journal entries are manually trying to find ways to correct that, okay? Unless you pretty much are very uh, specialized in accounting, not necessarily CPA, but accounting is your strong suit, I would not recommend you go in there and making journal entries on your own. I had a client attempt that. Their CPAs kicked them out for four hours because they said, look, we got to go fix everything that was done improperly. Yeah, you don't want to have that relationship type going on with your CPA. So once again, let's make sure that you're not having to do as many journal entries as possible, but understand this is what's operating under the background, okay? And I'm always stressing, you know, QuickBooks is trying to help you, so let it do so. Earl. Yeah, I'm gonna show my age here a little bit. You know, back in the day when I learned accounting for the very first time, they handed me one of those little plastic recipe boxes full of index cards and you had to split each one of them into a debit and credit for yeah. each of your chart of accounts. And that's how you did your entries. That's how they taught us debits and credits and journal entries and all that. And I'll tell you what, if that didn't send you running, screaming from the room and never want to touch accounting again, nothing would. So, uh, you know, if, if you're in that category where I was at one time of like accounting, bad, don't want it, just keep it away from me. The good thing is QuickBooks on uh, whether regardless of the version, Yep. will put all of that stuff in the background. It, it makes the transactions more, uh, quote unquote, daily. Uh, you, if you can fill out a check, you can put a transaction transaction into QuickBooks. Um, reconciliation, that tends to throw people for a loop. But, you know, if you don't reconcile uh, the, 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 that trail that you have to find to fix something gets longer and longer exponentially every day, and you're, you're going to basically defeat the purpose. The whole purpose here is to gather the financial data in an orderly fashion so that you have correct data so you make decisions on your business. So if you're not reconciling, you're not double checking to make sure that the garbage you put in isn't the garbage you're getting out. So make sure that you're at least checking your bank balances against your QuickBooks balance, check your credit card balances and uh, amounts owed, check your bank uh, loan balances, all of those things that are quick and easy for you to just do a double check. And if something's off, stop, go back, find out why it's off. It may just be one transaction or two right now, but if you wait six months to come back and stop and figure out what's wrong, well, you've lost all the memory part of accounting and it'll be that much harder for you to track it down. So um, definitely, 
don't just put this thing on autopilot and dump numbers into it and expect it to run on its own. It does a lot of that, but you still need to check it and make sure you're putting the right stuff in to get the right stuff out. And to give you a sense of what that can entail, you can actually export the entire ledger into Excel. I've had to, I've had to do that in the past. That was about 6,000 lines, and I ended up going through most of those just to find the error. That is not a fun place to be. So just to give you a perspective about what we're trying to do here. Now, once again, we're not trying to make you scared of QuickBooks, all right? Earl has been pointing out it's very easy. One of the easiest things to do is to switch between cash and accrual basis accounting. Now, for those that you have taken business classes, you may be familiar with them. If not, I'll try to give you the SparkNotes version right here. With cash, it's not revenue until it literally enters the account. And it's not an expense until it ends up leaving the account. But the accrual basis, it's looking at either revenue recognition, the matching principle. Have you actually earned that amount of income? Let's say you get paid a deal, you know, over three years, right? You know, and it's $30,000. Well, they would be split between those three years. And the expense, the same thing. Have you actually incurred that as well? It's looking at the timing of it. Investors love accrual basis accounting. It keeps everything nice and neat. You may to do accrual basis accounting. Maybe your corporation that's, say, doing $10 million in sales, you got plenty of inventory, you may be stuck with it. A lot of our clients run on the cash basis accounting. Okay, Why it's simple and a lot of businesses can qualify for it. Now, perhaps you need two elements. Maybe you need to understand what's going on with the cash basis, the accrual. Literally, you go into the reports, you click the button that says cash accrual, you hit run. Simple as that. All right. As one of the amazing features of QuickBooks, okay, we're able to determine both scenarios. Okay, so if one is needed for your taxation purposes and handling the CPA, the IRS, DOR, et cetera, you've got it. But you can always know in real time what's, what's going on with your cash basis. So it's a perfect microcosm of showing that QuickBooks can make it easy for you. Now, understanding the core concepts of QuickBooks, right, we kind of mentioned them to various degrees here. All right, Earl's talked about the items, chart of accounts, but you'll notice then you either have your customers and or your vendors. All right, but the vendors, think about them as everybody that you're paying outside of your employees. All right, they're probably gonna qualify as a vendor under QuickBooks. They have their own portion of the workspace handled to them. Same thing with the customers. Now let's be real though, you're probably gonna spend most of your time with the customers. Now, whether you actually have jobs in QuickBooks is a different story. But at the end of the day, if people aren't paying you money and you're not paying attention to actually managing these customers, you're probably not gonna stick around in commerce for very long. Now, the items is the unique thing that sometimes comes up because people, they're maybe not as familiar with it. There's items going on within QuickBooks all the time and you may not even notice it because you're like, well, look, I don't have a product. Maybe I got a service. Well, you're still charging per hour. You may have a different type of service that fall within the scope that you can offer. Essentially, you're talking about your items right there. But if you had to break down into a quadrant, you know, the various quadrants here for QuickBooks, this is what's going on. And of course, we're going to go into further detail on them as well. Earl. I just wanted to take a moment to geek out on inventory for just a second. That's uh, one you. of my favorite topics. Uh, I ran a balloon and party goods uh, operation. <clears throat> it was wholesale sold worldwide. And we had over 60,000 part numbers in our warehouse. And that, uh, as you can imagine, um, made me have to learn inventory very well, very quickly. Uh, I will be the first to tell you QuickBooks is not the A number one solution that I would select for inventory, but it is pretty good for most retail operations that we see uh, at the SBDC come through our door. Um, as Brent said, you know, setting up your items is, is crucial for inventory tracking. So I tell people, look, if it's something that you think you're gonna put on an invoice or put on a sales ticket, then it should have an item number. It should be an item set up in QuickBooks. If you're just dumping everything to sales, store sales, website sales, you have no idea what actually sold at the end of the day. You can't tell me what your top seller was. You can't tell me which item profits more than another. You, you know, all of that kind of data gets lost in the shuffle. So take some time, set up the items. Even if you're in the service business, every service you provide should be an individual item. So again, just think about it as if I was going to invoice a customer for what I do, 
how many variations or how many different items would I have that I might have to place on that invoice? That's what we're talking about when we say items. Don't get hung up on the fact that that sounds like products. Therefore, it's not for me if I'm a service. It's very much for everybody that uses QuickBooks. Great point, Earl. So I told you we're going to be spending a lot of time with the customers. So I figured we'd just show you what the workspace might look like. I mean, granted, I'm literally going to bring up the URL for the test drive that's going to be provided to you. We can mess around with that. But I figured this is probably what you're going to end up seeing when you log into the test drive or, you know, granted your variation of QuickBooks. But if you notice what the workspace essentially is trying to do here is show you the appropriate process. I mean, you see that from dealing with your banking here, but more importantly, as I mentioned, your customers are going to be your key elements. And so that's why my points of jobs, estimates, and invoicing, you know, you may or may not have jobs depending on the customer, you may not be even providing in estimates there's a good chance you're stuck with invoicing, assuming you're doing something of that nature. Now, interestingly enough, I noticed Earl said QuickBooks is not the best uh, inventory management system. And that's, that is true. And to the degree, QuickBooks is not a great CRM either, but it can be that for you, a customer relations management program. Because as we'll see, you're able to go in depth to the customers, not only offering a plethora of information regarding each one, but you can also set of those customers. But really what we're trying just to show with this basic is, yeah, this is gonna be your user face, but more importantly, let it work for you in that capacity, all right? Now we're gonna also talk further into the reports and trends, but I really wanted to stress that enough. Look, your customer management is crucial, okay? Now in terms of what information do you pull out of that, this may actually be one of the best features of QuickBooks, and it's what I work with on a routine basis with them is going on with the reports, particularly that first one, P&L, profit and loss. Now, you notice I got PDF and Excel because you can export that. Here's one thing I don't want to happen with your business. I don't want your information to be quote unquote held hostage, all right? I'm not saying that maliciously, but you know, if you're not working hand in hand with your bookkeeper, your CPA, you may be waiting around four months to what you should know within 20 seconds of the state of your business, all right? None of these reports require a great amount of time to export. You can literally do it in 30 seconds, okay? But the P&L, so it's got different angles. There's your standard profit and loss. There's the profit and loss detail. There's the profit and loss monthly analysis, okay? I use all three of those for various purposes, all right? Your P&L is just gonna give you your annual aggregate elements, but that's not really great when I'm trying to either put together a pro forma to perhaps expand the business and get financing, I need the profit and loss monthly analysis. Or as I had one client determine whether or not they should actually be open on a particular day of the week. In that case, I want the profit and loss detail. And that way I'm actually able to see, okay, with every day of that week, maybe it's a Wednesday, right? I'm able to determine what is the average variable cost and average fixed cost. So I can get my average total cost for that scenario to determine whether or not they're actually meeting the appropriate benchmark. Great tools right there, very simple. The balance sheet, you're talking about something that Excel may be lacking. You can, of course, build balance sheets in Excel, but a lot of templates, you may not actually have the running balance sheet uh, aggregated based on what you're inputting into that program. QuickBooks will do this for you. I mean, this is crucial for your bank loans, but also too, I mean, if you need to go get HubZone certified, you need to put a real-time balance sheet together. I had somebody was doing the online application, it's timed and you don't want to be in that scenario of, hey, I don't know my balance sheet and create it on the fly. You had to do that. It's not fun. This is making it easy for you as well. The third point is the aging accounts receivable and aging accounts payable. Now, QuickBooks with the user interface is going to tell you, all right, here are the people that still owe you money and these are the people that you owe money still to. All right. But it's breaking it down into the timing periods, right? What's current, what's going 30 days past, 60 days and 90 days. Right, particularly if you're looking for financing using accounts receivable as collateral, you know, it's going to show you, well, everything past that 60 day mark, probably not going to take as collateral, but you're able to figure out, okay, who do we really need to focus on? It's once again, trying to help you stay in the most liquid form possible. And lastly, as I've been stressing repeatedly throughout this webinar, the customer segmentation, because you truly want to know who are your most profitable customers for you. All right, you always hear that 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of your sales 
are generally accounted for by 20% of your customers. Wow. Who are those 20%? It's a good way to figure that out right here. But once again, to stress, this can be cash basis, accrual basis, PDF, or Excel. They can all be outputted. And the cool thing about reports is you can set favorites. So when you go in, it's going to give you some of the default things. But all you got to do is click the star right there, and it pops it up, pins it at the top, and you can access it at any time. And you can customize these further. One of the things I really love customizing is a percentage of sales, a percentage of income, as you'll see it within QuickBooks. When we are benchmarking a business, yes, I don't have the industry benchmarks within QuickBooks unless you're like tying in the Fathom, but I do have your individual calculations. Essentially, what it's doing is taking whatever that item is. I guess I should rephrase not item necessarily, but the row. So it could be, you know, accounts receivable, could be advertising rent, and it's dividing it by your sales and it's giving you a percentage of that. And generally, there'll be benchmarks or industry averages for that specific component. We can see how much in terms of standard deviations you are away from that. Because a lot of times people value businesses, not necessarily on the numerical value, but they're trying to make sure they're in alignment with the percentages. Now, once again, that's up to you as a business, whether you want to take care of a benchmarking, but it's got a great tool for doing that. So once again, you can build, customize, and keep them as favorites, and you're going to find out it's an amazing tool for business analysis. Earl. Yeah, this is probably the number one selling point for operating QuickBooks. You'll sit there and you'll toil over the over the keyboard and, and you'll have nasty words about how the, this is going and, and all kinds of things happen. But at the end of the day, once you've got the data in there and you press one button and it gives you a nice clean profit and loss, a balance sheet and all that, that I mean, that's that's where the payoff is, right? And as Brent said, it's not only for your benefit, it's primarily for your benefit, but it's not only for your benefit. You know, when COVID hit and all of these programs were released to help small businesses, the very first thing that these businesses had to do was produce financial documentation of where the business was 90 days ago, six months ago, a year ago, and so on. And those people who were running programs like QuickBooks, they pressed a button and they were in the front of the line. Everybody else was left scrambling, trying to figure out, okay, where's that shoebox full of receipts? And what do I need to put together? And who do I call? And so on and so on. And it took that much longer and put them further and further back in the queue. So um, you will find, I think, that of all the things that you get out of QuickBooks, you're going to find a handful of reports, maybe three or four reports that you will run on at a very minimum, a monthly basis, that all of a sudden you are in the position to be the president and CEO of your business. Uh, and I say that because I heard that from a client once uh, when we got done getting things all squared away and she was able to get the business on its two feet run, running QuickBooks. She said, you know what? I finally, for the first time, feel like I am qualified to be the president and CEO of this business. And I thought, wow, that is a great thing. That is, that is really some great feeling to have, right? So um yeah spend some time poke around on those reports find that that core group that makes you feel like president and ceo it'll it'll pay off for you indeed earl indeed my last two slides are very basic and then we'll get into the actual test drive uh some of you may not bother with checks uh just fyi your bank may say well we're going to give you some company checks cost you 35 and if you got a right one and it gets canceled 30 40 bucks or so I figured I'd let you know for those that ever do need to print checks, yes, QuickBooks can do that. All right. So I just threw it out there. It's a nice little tidbit when, yes, I'm still a check guy, but it has that capability to help you out. The last thing that we wanted to point out from the QuickBooks scenario was focusing on other areas of importance. All right. One of those is related to the employee center. So you can look at how you're managing the W-2 employees. All right. If you set up a payroll, know what's going on with the whole withholdings of said employees. You can see the tax center. A lot of times if you go into the test drive, it's probably going to focus on initially the sales tax items to see, well, what is your sales tax payable for that scenario each month? But even if you don't have that, perhaps you are wanting to focus on mileage. All right. So some businesses do deduct mileage based on the current IRS mileage rate. I think for this year, we're coming into the 58.5 cents per every mile. You know, if you do get it audited, they want to see that log and 
why make something complicated when you can log in what's going on with your mileage, you know, maybe synchronize with an app. So we figured we would show that with you nonetheless. Now here is our information. Believe me, we're not done yet. We're going to get in course now into probably what you wanted to see with the test drive, but here's our information. We'll be happy to assist with whatever your needs are. And if you are not yet a client, you know, if you just signed up for training, but you actually went consultations, you know, the URL that you see at the top will certainly assist for that. So now that we're on that, let me stop share for this moment and access our Brent, while you're doing, Brent, while you're doing that, I'm going to answer a couple yes, questions. Yes, go for it. So uh, just some real quick ones here. Um, somebody asked, being a consultant, uh, being a consulting business with no inventory, um, uh, just billing and invoicing, what, what is ba basically the best version? And uh, I have run a consulting business. I find that the essentials version is fine for that. But, you know, what I would suggest that you do, and you're going to hear this answer a couple of times with some of these questions, is reach out to your SBDC consultant. We're, we're happy to assess what aspects of the business um, you, you have going and which of these, uh, these versions best fit to, um, to, to, to service those aspects. So um, somebody asked about a food truck business, uh, what version that should be. Food trucks are uh, actually as much if not more difficult to operate than any other business because typically they're on thin margins. They need a lot more detail uh, to, to analyze what to do in a much quicker fashion because you're, you're, you're always on the go, literally. And uh, that the atmosphere of a food truck changes a lot. So this, even those reports that we just covered are extremely valuable to a business that, that has a lot of different dynamics involved in it. So uh, I still don't think that that's a simple start. I still think that's either a, an essential or a plus um, um, a version of QuickBooks. Um, somebody said something about a bank was charging a, a fee for them to sync up their QuickBooks. I have not seen a, a bank charge a fee to sync up the QuickBooks. I have seen them charge to download additional yeah. data. So if you ask for more than 90 days history, you may get a charge on that. Um, but normally that initial linkage with probably about 90 days of history, that's usually no charge. Um, I'm going to save the social security and uh, cyber security one for later. Uh, Brent, if we could leave a few minutes at the end to answer yeah, that one. That's no problem. Um, somebody asked about CPAs and uh, whether if they need a CPA if they have QuickBooks. The answer is yes. Uh, QuickBooks is made to do the bookkeeping aspect, which is gathering the data, organizing the data, putting it in a fashion that you can then analyze it. CPAs bring that analysis part to it. The QuickBooks cannot tell you whether or not you should lease a vehicle, buy a vehicle, whether you should purchase equipment or buy used equipment or whatever. It, it can't tell you that. It can only track what you have done. So CPAs are who you bring in to answer those kinds of questions, tax strategy, those kinds of things. So yes, you still need both. Um, so with that, uh, go ahead, Brent, and do the yep. test drive. I only have two more, then we'll cover sure. this. Sure. And, and Brent, quickly, yes, my apologies for interrupting. There are still sure. two people on that we cannot track your registration. So one is Gene Major <laughs> Mims. Um, we do not have you on our registration sheet. So if you could possibly provide the name that registered and the name of the business, and the other one is Mo iPhone. So if both of you could provide our inf your information, that would be most helpful. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, so sir. This is the test drive link. And yes, I know someone had asked, hey, will we be supplying it? Yes, we will give that out. Because if you become QuickBooks certified, which you can do, it's called the QuickBooks Pro Advisor Program. All right, it's going to take you through training models. That's what you end up utilizing for several scenarios, just to better understand. Now, please That's understand this fact. also. QuickBooks. They can adjust this really at any time in terms of is a icon over here? Is it over there? All right. That's sometimes can be always uh, a tricky process. I had to go through the recertification and they were changing up things since I did it, you know, several months before. 
but I just want to make you aware those things are subject to change. What's not is what's going on with most of the interface, right? You notice this graphic, it was right here for the workspace, all right? And when you're coming into the dashboard, you're probably looking for this for the business overview, okay? Because I think I've talked about several of these. I actually built a very simple version of this in Excel. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things going behind the scenes with pivot tables and pivot charts. QuickBooks is doing this all in real time and it's not gonna have to worry about lag on that, all right? So you can see your P&L here. You got a donut for the expenses and you're actually able to determine, all right, something overdue. We have funds that are not deposited yet, right? You've got your synchronized banking and it looks like several cards, MasterCard and Visa, all right? You wanna look at what's going on with your sales each day. This is something I had clients asked me to build an Excel prior and I do love it because you're able to really determine the daily volume of your sales and at least understand the linear progression of that. Now we mentioned, right, chart of accounts. So of course, this is what QuickBooks is operating under. So we can see what's going on. If you'll notice uh, Craig's landscaping, that's always gonna be the go-to for these training purposes, right? But we've got checking established as one of the accounts. We've got savings, got accounts receivable, right? So that's money that people are supposed to owe to us. Hopefully we actually get said money. Someone was mentioning with a food truck, all right? I don't know necessarily it's a food truck, but it is indeed a truck that has its depreciation factored into it. The money that we owe people in that case, all right? We've got our two credit cards here. And you'll notice the sales tax I mentioned, right? So it looks like they are responsible for collecting and reporting sales tax within Arizona. Notice. You also have the type, right? So current assets, think about it, things, you know, under one year, you got your fixed assets, which were longer, you've got your income, and then you've worked your way down into the expenses. But this is what kind of what Earl is talking about. Different items on an invoice. Also too, your scope of services change, right? So we've got the landscaping, we've got pest control. You know, for your business, you want it itemized up because then you're really able to get a better sense of what's going on with each facet of your business. But if you ever want to change these, you can feel free to do so. And as you can see, I think this is the QuickBooks test drive is probably using the versions of essential. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, maybe essentials are higher and it's locked into the 250. Now, what are we doing with our vendors, right? I mentioned that it's kind of a very small version of a customer relations management database. Same thing applies to the vendors element. So I could see what's going on with Bob's burger joint and I can determine not only what's going on with the batch items, but I can also then edit the information. Hopefully we're not gonna make him inactive or Bob's, the company inactive. All that information can be put in there as needed. You know, If we need to store somebody's EIN number for 1099 purposes, we can do that. You know, let's say we were coming in to prior with some other form of accounting, we could establish an opening balance for that to perfectly match up in each transaction, right? We've got projects over here. The reports though, we mentioned those were keys. So I would definitely wanted to show them. A star is just put on with a favor, right? So by default, it's got the balance sheet, the PL, and the aging accounts receivable. But I like some that are a little better than that. I particularly like the percentage of total income. So I'm able to see what's going on, which each of these aspects. So notice your total sales, dividing your total sales, you know, you're going to end up with that perfect 100%. But when we're benchmarking a business, I'm very curious about the total cost of goods sold. This is only 3.97% of the total sales. That's just a figure, right? I want to better understand what is the benchmark for similar types of companies. So it's doing it for all the various categories you know, from all the way from legal and professional to utilities, it's there for your availability. I mentioned earlier, right? Hey, you want to turn this into cash basis? Click a button, run a report. Congratulations. We have ourselves a new analysis. And what you can customize them, save them for those. They're going to show up under custom reports. They've also got the managed reports. So think about it like if your LLC had a couple other members who are kind of that silent partners, for lack of a better term. They may want to better understand what's going on with the companies each of the quarterly meetings. Go pump out this for them. It'll look brilliant. And the other things I mentioned, right, profit and loss by month. Particularly if we're going to need financing, this is where I want to start off of because the Excel templates I put together function in a similar pattern to that. Uh, we mentioned mileage, right? You know, we're going to skip for now. In this case, it doesn't look like any mileages or trips have been logged in here. Notice it's got the current IRS mileage rate tapped in. 
We can see what's going on with the number of employees in this system. You know, if we need to add another one, we don't have payroll right now. Here's the cool thing. You ever end up with a situation where we break something, it's perfectly fine. This thing, all you have to do is just refresh and you cannot harm it. All right. Now, I know Earl had mentioned in here in terms of our sales. So let's get to our products and services because we may have some inventory in place. Right. And I'm able to see what's the quantity on hand. OK, no, it's not determining your safety stock levels. You're going to have to do that yourself but it is still able to show you, okay, what do we have in place? It looks like they got 25 pumps and two rock fountains left, right? We just need to compare based on the low stock. We haven't set any things in those elements. The customers, same thing with the vendors, right? It's showing us, you know, if we had any estimates out there, we do have some money overdue. So hopefully we were able to <laughs> get that taken care of. And if we need to add in a new customer, we can do so, right? But the products and services, some of you may say, well, look, I want to add something in. You know, if you're not doing a um, SKU element, go for the service. Maybe we do want to add an inventory. Okay, we can do that. It's allowing you to even stick the picture to that. So if you're a very much a visual person, it will work to your advantage as well. And I think the one thing we hadn't really looked at was the banking element. I think I love that's actually hidden under banking is receipts. And with the receipts, yeah, we don't need to watch a video at the moment if it will cooperate. It's running a little slow. There we are. With, with most of your equipment, right, things that depreciate your CPA definitely wants you to hold on to documentation of when you bought it, where, et cetera. A lot of times you have to use safety deposit box to store something. This will do the same thing. You can upload them in. You don't have to worry about losing things, all right? So it's there for your advantage. Please utilize it. And so what we're able to see here is, you know, in real time, what's going on with the banking account, what's going on with the MasterCards. Apparently there was some undeposited funds that needed to be reconciled further, but that is just one other element. I'm trying to think of some else. Okay, so we went through employees, we went through sales. Uh, we got the invoicing. That's something I haven't talked about. You can actually, you know, set different items as Earl was mentioning on that case. You know, too, when you get really into advanced QuickBooks, you can set certain customer discounts for that, which are certainly beneficial uh, depending on what you're offering, right? So yeah, we hit most of the highlights, banking. Oh yeah, apps. That was it. I was trying to think what I had not gone through yet. Okay, you want to synchronize those apps in. Here they are. Now, Earl, to our point, um, let's look at a few of these in terms of ratings. Unfortunately, with the new Square, it's got two out of five, which is, I don't know, encouraging. <laughs> A lot of uh, consumer confidence, but it is one example to that. You know, we've got the QuickBooks time. We've got some of these other things with the Shopify. I have a client who's uh, trying to work out a few uh, elements in there. I think uh, was overestimating on the sales on some elements, but DocuSign, you need it to tie in. Any of these, you can search for them. You can get them synchronized with QuickBooks, but with QuickBooks Online, it's going to be easier than, say, the other alternative. So yeah, or I know I want to just go through the various categories, but yes, I know we're short on time. So yeah, I was just going to add that you know QuickBooks does a lot of things, but if you find that there's something that you just aren't able to do that you need for your business, your first line of defense is the apps. And if they don't find an app that will do it, look at the software that you're trying to communicate with and see if it has a QuickBooks upload option. If it does. You can download download data directly out of QuickBooks to be uploaded directly into other applications. It's not very pretty, but uh, it works. So uh, there are other options, even if you find that the software you're trying to get to interconnect with QuickBooks is not readily available uh, through an app or something like that. And the only other thing I wanted to point out real quick, if you need to export, this is how to do it. It's just this little button right here. But more importantly, unless you're giving some to an investor, try to export in Excel. It's going to make it so much easier when you're incorporating said data. So with that said, Earl, have we got any other questions that we need to answer out of the chat? Yeah, the only other question I had that I had not addressed is the security issue. Somebody asked if uh, we're entering social security numbers and employee data into QuickBooks. You know, is that safe? Um, should should they? Uh, should they be concerned when using a payroll option and you know, because it contains all yeah. that data? So first, first is yes, you should be concerned. It is uh, personal information yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, 
one, it's bad to lose it. Two, it, it can lead to litigation. I mean, uh, you don't want to be caught on the wrong end of being uh, hacked and find out that you didn't do everything that you could do to protect that data, and therefore you're now liable for damages. So the, th the, the short answer, and I'll be happy to discuss this in detail with people off of, offline after class. Uh, the short answer is QuickBooks Online encrypts the data that they have on their cloud servers. But if that cloud server is hacked and the technology is there to grab that data and decrypt it, then it would be exposed. That is a really big if that happened, but in today's world, we do have to allow for those contingencies. The other thing I want to point out is QuickBooks, all your data in the cloud, the, the, the uh, responsibility of backups is up to you. But don't assume that just because you have all your data in the cloud that you're safe. You should still be backing up the data that you have in QuickBooks. Pull that information down into a backup file, hopefully encrypted, that you can then store just like you would any other backups that I'm sure everybody's doing for their companies uh, with all of their systems. But um, that will help protect it as well. But as you're transferring data, make sure you're encrypting data, you're, you're, um, uh, make, make sure basically that you're, you're not leaving data out there unprotected uh, in un unencrypted files, in cloud-based servers uh, or storage um, companies that don't take the care that you need to have. And uh, cybersecurity is, is a huge topic and you get me going and we'll have, be here another hour. But um, yeah, if you're concerned about that, I would suggest that you set up a time to give me a call. Um, we, you saw the slide there with our contact information. I posted it out on the chat as well for my email address. Uh, I'll be happy to talk to you about that topic. Uh, let's see, I think we had one or two more come in here. Uh, what is uh, QuickBooks accountant account? Uh, so that is the account that accountants would use to manage money. You have an, a QuickBooks accountant account, and under that would be all of the individual businesses that you manage. And that allows you then to do the work on those individual companies without having to log in and log out of every individual company. Uh, it's Kind of sweet, actually, if, if you have ever had an opportunity to get in and use that or have need of that, it works really well. So, and um, I would point out too, if you are going to have a, a CPA manage your QuickBooks through the accountant, ensure that you at least have print uh, permissions so that way you can pull in your reports as needed. Your CPA may want to keep you from uh, accidentally distorting yeah. your ledger, but you <laughs> need to have access to be able to pull those reports. Because if you don't, what's the whole point of it? Yeah, and you can you can give those permissions to anyone you choose. Certainly, your yep. CPA would be a good good way to set that up. Yep. Um, as a new business, should we join the accountant's account? Probably not. You just want the the standard QBO. Um, there are there are more features in the accountant's um, version. But typically, they're not associated with anything that you need to do to run your business day to day. Um, leave that to the accountants. You, none of us want to be that way unless we're an accountant, right? <laughs> um, I think that is uh, all we have out there right now. Um, yeah, I'm looking through. Oh, someone I, wanted us to post the contact again. I can do yeah, that pull that slide back up there. Yes, you. I will do that right now. Feel free to email is the easiest way with me. I can't speak for you, Earl, but yeah, I'll, I'd check that yeah. routinely. That is the fastest way for me, email. Yep. 